A lot of these social websites act as data silos, and you know it's arguable whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. You know, people may say, well, you know, I've got my LinkedIn site, I've got my Facebook site, and I want to keep them separate, I don't want them to be joined together. But there are instances where you may want to actually bring stuff from one site to another site, and you find it quite difficult to do so. If you have your Flickr photographs, you want to bring them to Facebook. You've got some friends on Bebo, and you know it's collapsing, and you decide I want to bring them over to um, Facebook because that's where um, everybody is. At the moment, it's quite difficult to do. Um, to do it between various types of social websites because they are basically islands sitting in an ocean of, of, of the web. They're disconnected and there are few mechanisms for um, exchanging information about your friends but also information about your content from one site to another. So we have very uh, many isolated communities of users and their data. Um, that it may be that you know, you're here and you also have a presence over here but the bits of your stuff that's here can't be replicated over here. So maybe you've been doing some blog posts over here and you've been creating some bookmarks here and maybe some blog posts as well. But you can't get this kind of overall picture of what you've contributed to multiple sites, um, whether they be mailing lists or social network sites or forums or whatever. There's no way to actually bring all that stuff together. So we need to see, is there ways that we can connect these islands if people want to do so? You know, give people the, the option at least of being able to bring stuff from one place to another and to allow them to you know, cross, build bridges between these islands and to bring stuff with them from one place to another, whether it be their paper photographs or, or whatever. So the semantic web is um, a mechanism to do this. And, um, you know, I, 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 I've heard lots of diff different definitions of the semantic web and I was talking with Ted earlier on, some guy said, oh, that's semantic web stuff, it's focus focus, you know, it's, it, it's almost kind of, you know, there are so many different scenarios, positive about what it will do for you that it just seems like you know, it'll never happen. But at its, its fundamental core, it's actually quite a simple idea. It's just a big graph of things connected together. And the web that we have at the moment is based just lots of pages connected by hyperlinks. So you, you go to a page and you see lots of links to other pages and you click on a link and it brings it to another page and so on. And the semantic web is like that, except that instead of just having these documents connected together through some hyperlinks, we have things connected together through some links that have a bit of meaning. So for example, we've got Bob and Carol here. They're two people. They're not documents, they're people. And there's a link between them that says Bob knows Carol. Right? So it's a graph that's, that's connecting Bob and Carol. And then there's another link from Bob that says he's got an account, he's holding, he holds an account that's called Roberto. And maybe he holds another account that's called Robert. And maybe this account is on wordpress.com and this account is on delicious. And everything is connected in, in this kind of this graph. Maybe Bob knows somebody else who's off screen there called Alice. And uh, maybe using his account Roberto, he created some uh, bookmarks. And maybe using, using his account Robert, he connected, he, he created some blog posts. So everything kind of is connected through this um, this graph. And little bits of this graph may come from different places. So maybe this information about Bob and his friends comes from Facebook. Maybe this information about his account on WordPress.com and the blog post he's created there comes from WordPress. And maybe this information from about Delicious and what he's done there comes from Delicious. But they're all connected together because they're all using the same identifiers for Bob, um, for Carol, for whatever. Um, and that's the kind of idea of the semantic web. And the way it's represented um, for computers is there's different forms for representing this, this graph. The original form was to use XML. And it was pretty. It was a pretty horrible form to look at. It was quite difficult to figure out this graph structure from the XML. They kind of forced this fairly simple structure into XML because people were used to working used to working with XML. They're coming for me. Oh! <laughs> um, but there's been various other more elegant uh, mechanisms to represent our RDF. Everything in, in, in sorry RDF. I, to mention that RDF is basically the this graph structure, it's the name for it, it's called resource description framework. And everything kind of consists of triples. You've got a subject, you've got some kind of predicate or property which connects them together, and you've got an object that's pointing to. So you kind of have all of these statements which are composed of three things. Um, Bob holds an account which is Roberto, um, Robert R um, is an account that has a, a account service homepage which is WordPress.com. Um, Robert R is the creator of this post, it's gone off the screen there, and so on. And you can have a big list of these statements and it can be coded in XML or RDF or whatever. Okay. 
So that's the kind of you know the basis of the semantic web. And actually the origins of it go back to the, the original web. This is the original document written by Tim Berners Lee in nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety, called Information Management and Proposal. And this was this was his original vision for the web. There's a, a good book by Tim Berners Lee called Weaving the Web where he kind of goes in terms of, he goes into the background the origins of the web. And he basically explains why he why he wants to do the web in the first place. He worked in a big research distributed research institute in, in Switzerland called CERN. Um, and he was trying to figure out a way of expressing information about the expertise of different people in the institute. Um, how could he, ha going beyond this was a phone directory, how could he find out what people were experts in, what documents they worked on, what projects they were working on and so on. And he did this little picture showing what he thought maybe this information management system would look like, where you would be able to see all of these things connected together, for example, this would be sort of the hierarchical um, personnel tree maybe, and this is Tim at the bottom here, and he wrote a document, and this document refers to certain concepts, and it describes this mesh was the original name for the web, this proposal called the mesh, it refers to hypertext, and everything is connected together through these meaningful links. And this basically was the foundation for the web, which eventually emerged, um, became documents connected together by hyperlinks. But there was always this idea that the links between documents should be actually meaningful, that they should say, you know, this document is linked to this document, but the reason it's linked is because it describes it, or maybe if you've got a document about John, and I'm linking to the document about NUI Galway, the reason they're linked together is because I'm employed by NUI Galway, or I went to college in NUI Galway. It's not just some kind of unknown reason why they're connected together. Everyone with me so far? Thanks. Um, so Declan mentioned that it's been a sort of a busy week for the semantic web, and um, I suppose because the two big names in the social web have started to publish um, or say that they will make some use of semantic uh, web data. And the first one was from Facebook, and it's what's called the Facebook Open Graph. Did anyone hear about a story last week? Facebook Open Graph? No? Yeah? Hands up. I'm giving very vague responses. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so the Open Graph is basically an idea from Facebook that will allow website owners to publish some metadata on their own websites. And this metadata can, be then, can then be pulled into uh, Facebook and can be used to enrich people's profiles or news feeds or whatever. So as an example, I think the example they use is if you have, an IM, if you have a movie site like IMDB, um, people, the, the IMDB owners, whoever, have, have marked up the various movies saying this is a title, this is um, um, the link to the movie and so on. This is a picture. For, for the movie, and that information then can be pulled into Facebook and can be used to um, can, can be can can be um, embedded in news feeds or whatever. The mechanism for doing that is they are allowing people to put a little like button onto their websites, and as soon as you click on the like button, it imports the metadata from this external site into Facebook and then enhances your news feed or your profile or whatever. Um, and they've, they've, they've given a schema, which is a Facebook-defined schema, to allow you to, to define the data on your site. So, for example, if you have a restaurant, you can, um, you can mark up on your website the information about the name, the location, the context for the restaurant, and so on. And then if somebody clicked on your restaurant page and clicked on like, that could be pulled into Facebook and it would show it in a nice way. They would show maybe a map or uh, might show who's contact and so on. So there's been a lot of um, debate about is this a good move for the semantic web, or is this a good move for Facebook, or whatever? And I've got this picture in the background, which is kind of a, um, a famous joke in the internet community, which is it's from a, a Japanese computer game, it's all your base are belong to us. But it just kind of reminded me of something, or it just kind of sounded like all your pages are belong to us, like Facebook was saying, well, now we, um, well, you publish this information on your pages, and then we can get that stuff into our system, and that's kind of pulled into Facebook. However, there may still be use for the, this data outside of Facebook. So they're going to get a load of people to add semantic markups to their pages. And it'll be interesting to see what people do with that outside of Facebook. You know, so okay, it's well and good that they have, they've created their own schemas and they've, um, they've, they're saying, put this little like button, you can put it into Facebook. But people will also will start to realize, well, we've got this metadata now on our web page. What can we do with it outside of Facebook? And can this be used to help search engines or can it be used to maybe power some other social websites or whatever. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, there's been a lot of criticism about this in terms of, you know, it's just good for Facebook, but in reality, if people do interesting things with it, it could be good for, for the larger web.